Building information modeling is a process that promises us collaboration via reliable, consistent, and coordinated data. Now here I have three sessions of Revit running, and Revit is meant to facilitate BIM. Um, however, I'm not seeing consistency regarding the floor plans of the model. The architect model is visible on the session on the left. The structural designer's model is visible on the session in the upper right and the MEP engineer's model is visible in the session on the lower right. But again, I'm seeing three distinct looking views of the model even though they're all looking at the same data. Now a couple of things to be aware of here is that each discipline uh, of the views is affecting how the model is displayed. For instance, in the architect's model, their view is set to architectural for the discipline, which means that architectural elements display normally uh, via this discipline parameter. On the structural uh, session here, you can see that their view is set to structural. Now with that set to structural, it's actually doing some filtering. It's filtering out non-load bearing elements and it's displaying the elements that are relevant to structural design. On the MEP session here, if I scroll down you'll notice that it's set to mechanical and what that is doing is it's actually automatically half toning the architect's model but it's kind of displaying the way the architect's model is, but with more information in some cases and less. So how do I get the level of consistency I'm looking for when all three sessions are viewing the model differently based on the parameter settings of their view? Well, one factor to consider is view range. The architect and the MEP engineer are probably going to have the closest view range settings due to the fact that they look at the plan from floor to floor. Structural designers, however, look at things a different way. They actually cradle a level above to see just above the floor and just below it. So they're, nece they're not necessarily seeing the information the same way the uh, MEP engineer would as well as the architect. However, what the structural designer would like to do is see the lower level below their framing so that there's referenceable information there. Sometimes the architect uses things like plan regions which do not play very well with uh, MEP uh, and that might have an effect on how we display the models across links. So what do we do when we deal with these link models from the architects? Well we have to take them uh, for what they're worth sometimes but there are ways to get around this limitation. One thing we can do as a structural designer for instance is we can change to coordination and by changing to coordination it gives all the disciplines inside of Revit equal take on how they display. There's no filtering, there's no overriding. So again, if I come down here to the MEP session and I switch that one over to coordination, again, I get closer to what the architect is seeing. So everything is displayed equally. But again, I get that inconsistent factor. So I might want to take it up one notch. I might want to go to visibility graphics and maybe half tone their model. So I come in and link and I go and I half tone their view of the model. So how do I how do I get over the uh, to the fact that I'm still seeing less or more information as a consultant? Well, this again comes back to the primary focus of building information modeling, which is communication. All I need to do is go back and contact the architect and say can you create cloned views of your floor plans, sections, elevations, whatever it may be, and strip them of any annotation and predefine them for me so that I can link them across. Notice that if I go into the MEP session here and I bring up the dialog for visibility graphics, I can click on Revit links and instead of using my host view settings, I can override them to link in a view from the architect's model you'll notice that I get a list of all the floor plans currently available in their model which is listed here so what I need to do is I need to go into the architect model and create those background views that the consultants are looking for and it's real easy to do all I need to do is right click on the view that they want duplicate it and that strips out all the annotation from my primary view that I used as my source I can now rename it to something more appropriate. So I'll just call it link view dash 01 entry level. And I might want to even go as far as to strip some of the additional information that I don't want to send over. So maybe I want to hide the grids.
So I can make them half tone or I can I can make them not visible. So there you go. I can go and set up the view just the way I want. I can go as far as to maybe turn off certain things like hatch patterns. So maybe I want to turn off the floor surface patterns. They might not be relevant to the designers across the pond. So here we go. I get that all set up the way I want it to. I save the architectural file and then I send it back to my consultants. So in the meantime, let's go back and undo everything that we have done so far to the display of the models. Let's go back to where they were originally when we started. And now you can see the difference. So with that being said now, let's go and look at how we get that data that the architect stand, set up for us. So we get that consistency in our, in our views. Well, I'm going to reload the model in each of the sessions here. So let's start with the structural designer. They want to underlay the first floor in their second floor framing plan, which you see is the second floor here. I go into the visibility graphics of that view. I come in and I set the display settings of the link to be by link view. And in this case, it's going to be that 01 link view entry. If I hit OK, the other thing I might want to do is half tone it. So I'm going to half tone it and hit OK. And there you go. Now the structural engineer can start framing out the second floor plan with the underlay of the first floor as a backdrop, just like we did in CAD. On the MEP side of things, we can utilize the same technique. Now the MEP discipline setting already half tones the model, so that's one less step we have to do than the structural engineer. But again, we can go to the visibility settings, go to Revit links, and link across that view that the architect provided. And by doing that, we actually get a level of consistency that we were originally shooting for when it came to the look and feel of our documents. Now we can proceed with our duct work inside this mechanical plan. The structural designer can continue with framing out the second floor. And we get that coordinated, consistent look that we're looking for when we go to document our buildings.